Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixel Perfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic day and turning it into an absolutely brilliant and magnificent fun. Well, today I'm going to share with you a couple of techniques to place anything on any screen absolutely realistically. And we can use the same techniques to create a mock-up. And we'll do that. And we're going to share it with you by the end of the video. So without any further ado, let's get started. Somehow I... Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you already know what to do. Check the links in the description. Now the very first thing we will do here is to determine the aspect ratio of the screen. So right now we know that she's holding an iPad and we know that the resolution of the iPad is 2388 by 1668 and how did I know that? Have a look. Apple's own website. Try to always look at the official sources when possible and if not you can always google it and even if that doesn't give you the information you can always guess it. For example if it's a new TV you know the aspect ratio in most cases would be 16 by 9 or if it is a regular Windows laptop most likely it would be also 16 by 9. Mac has 16 by 10. So these things we can guess. The next step is take the rectangle tool make sure the fill is neutral gray so you can click on in here make sure the hex code is 808080 or you can set the hue and saturation to 0 and brightness to 50. That will also determine that it's neutral gray. Since this color is the most neutral, it will be the best to depict the reflections and the lighting and the brightness and all of that good stuff. All right, hit OK. Now make sure there is no stroke. So click right here and then click on no stroke button. Now all you need to do is to single click anywhere on the image. That's it. The create rectangle dialog box will show up and here is where you will dial the width and the height that we just figured out in the first step. So if you have a TV or laptop with 16 by 9 aspect ratio, just simply type in 1600 or 160 by 90, anything in 16 by 9 aspect ratio, right? And you can always resize it. This is a shape, it's a vector. It will not lose quality if you resize it. Just make sure that the aspect ratio is maintained. Now in this case, we know that the width is 1668 by 2388. There you go for the iPad and hit OK. The next step is, in this case, it isn't a problem, but always make sure that the size of the rectangle is larger than the tab right there so that when you resize it, you don't lose quality. Now, if your screen has rounded corners, that also needs to be considered. So if this was a new iPad Pro, I would select the rectangle too. Have a look at these circles around the corners. Just drag them to add rounded corners. All right, in this case, we don't need it, so we're gonna keep it at that. But if in your image you do have rounded corners, please do not miss this step. Next step, convert this layer into a smart object by right-clicking on it and choosing Convert to Smart Object. Now press Ctrl or Command T, right-click on it and then choose Distort. And all you have to do is to place it properly over the screen. Place this corner right here. Similarly, let's place all the corners properly. Now it's time for us to fine-tune it. Now this point you will have to guess. And how can we guess it? Just make sure that all of this lines up properly right here as well. So if we take it a little bit to the left, have a look, this one lines up. This one, not as much. So move it, nudge it a little bit more. And there you go. I think this would be the perfect place. We might have to nudge it slightly, but have a look, this lines properly that aligns properly. So that's how you find the missing corners. Now it looks okay, but there are slight issues. If you zoom in, have a look, there's a slight gap right there. There's also a slight gap right here. Now keep in mind, electronics aren't perfect. Cameras aren't perfect. So things are supposed to bend here and there. We need to adapt to that. And how do we do it? Right click on it again and then choose warp. And then simply just drag it and align it. As simple as that. Similarly, let's do it right here as well. There we go. You can also move these points. I think it looks okay to me. Once you're happy, hit enter or return. Let's name this layer placeholder because this is where we will place our designs or anything you want on the screen. Now we need to take away the fingers and the hands and how do we do that? Turn off the placeholder, get back to the background and then you can use any selection tool that you like. I'm just gonna use the quick selection tool and make a selection of the areas which are covering the screen. That's all. Now this is not the area so hold the Alt key or the Option key and paint on it to subtract that. Now, this is not the final selection. Now we need to add this area to the selection as well. I think that's more than enough. And it's missing right here, but that doesn't matter because it's not a part of the screen. Now let's turn on the placeholder. With all of this active, hold the Alt key or the Option key and then click on the mask button. It creates a negative mask. Now we can fine tune this mask later or you can take your time to do it. Don't you worry about it. Right now, simply change the blend mode of the placeholder from normal to screen. And there you go. Doesn't that look realistic? Now that's one way of doing it, which you can use. Now there's another way of doing it, which I recommend. And there's a reason I recommend it. And that is keep it normal, all right? Make a copy of the background layer, 
place it at the top and only apply it over this placeholder by holding the Alt key or the Option key and clicking on the line between these two layers. That way, the background copy is limited to the placeholder. So right now, if I turn off the background, you'll see that just over the placeholder, we are applying it. All right, and now change the blend mode of this background copy that is being applied or projected on the placeholder to screen. It creates the exact same effect. Now, why did I tell you to do this? There's a reason behind recommending this method and that is flexibility. First of all, let's name this layer screen projection or reflection, whatever you want to name it, and then convert this layer into a smart object by going to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK. Now, you have loads more control right here. If you go to image, adjustments, curves, you can control the brightness of the reflections or the dark areas. So if you move this slider to the right, have a look, it takes away the reflections from the dark areas. If you move the rightmost slider to the left, it makes the bright areas of the reflection brighter. So you have lots and lots of controls. I'm just going to leave it at that. And keep in mind, this is a smart object. You can always change the curves right here. So you can always double click on it and change it whenever you want. Let's collapse this one. And there you have your mock-up partially ready, but there's something missing. Can you tell what that is? If you zoom in, have a look. This placeholder is sharp through and through. But if you look at the tab right here, there's a shallow depth of field going on. This area, as you can see, is in focus. This area is out of focus. Similarly, this area right here is out of focus as well. And that area is in focus. So we definitely do need to consider that shallow depth of field. So to apply the blur better, just apply some design on the placeholder so that we can see the blur happening. Otherwise, this placeholder is just blank gray, right? We won't be able to properly determine how much blur is being applied unless there's something on it. So double click on the thumbnail of the placeholder and place any complex design here where we can figure out the blur through and through. So I have some designs. By the way, this is just a screenshot from an iPad. So let's just drag it and drop it over it. And as you can see, it just fits perfectly. You know why? Because we carefully chose the resolution on the aspect ratio. Hit enter or return. Make sure that there are no gaps around the corners. There's a slight gap. So how do we fill it? Simple. Press Ctrl or Command D. Just extend it. It's just one pixel. That's all. Take a look at the top as well. No gaps. At the bottom as well, no gaps. Hit enter or return and press Ctrl or Command S. Now when you get back to your image, have a look at it. Isn't that looking so fantastic? Now, of course, the depth of field just doesn't look right. All of these areas are in focus. So we need to take it out of focus. Since this layer is already a smart object, you don't have to worry about converting it again to a smart object. Let's go to filter, blur gallery, and then tilt shift. Place the center in the area which you think is just in focus. And by the way, decrease the blur all the way to the left hand side so that the processes happen quickly. And then we can control the blur later. And now let's just rotate it just like this. I think if you look closely, the blur starts right here. And on the opposite side, have a look, it begins to start right over here. So we can just place these lines accordingly. Maybe move it a little bit down. That looks all right to me. And these dotted lines are where blur stops increasing. So from this solid line to this dotted line, blur gradually increases from zero to whatever number you choose here. If you choose 15 pixels, it would be zero right here. Slowly and gradually, it would increase to zero, five, 10, and here 15. And beyond that, everything is blurred at 15. Similarly, on the other side as well, zero, five, 10, 15, everything beyond that, 15. So let's keep the dotted line at the very edge and similarly right here, let's keep it this way. And now slowly and gradually keep on increasing the blur. Have a look, now it looks so much more realistic. See, since these areas are getting blurred, this area of the screen is also getting blurred. If you think it's too blurred, you don't have to change this. Just move the dotted line a little away. Now, I think this is just perfect. If you're happy with this, hit OK. Also keep in mind, you can always change this later. Just double click on the blur gallery. It will take you to the exact same thing. And there you have it. Isn't that looking fantastic? And now my friend, your mock-up is ready. And how do you use it by the way? There are a couple controls, just like you have on the iPad. The placeholder's opacity controls the screen brightness. So just let's name it that way. So that the people who download the mock-up knows how to do it. So if you just simply decrease the opacity, have a look. It's exactly similar to decreasing or increasing the screen brightness. So right now I'm just gonna keep it 50% to make it look absolutely realistic. And if you do wanna increase or decrease the screen reflections, just open up the curves right here, 
attached to the screen reflections as a smart filter. Double click on the curves and the rightmost slider that you see, you can move it right or left to control the brightness of the reflections. Let's keep it a little bit to the right and there you go. Hit OK. And anytime you want to place anything on this screen, all you have to do is to double click on the placeholder and place anything right here. So let's try placing something interesting. This is also a screenshot. Jay-Z, this is a killer song, listen to it. Anyway, place it, press Ctrl or Command S. Then when you get back to it, look at it. Just look at it. All the blur and the shallow depth of field, everything so nicely applied. It just is amazing. And again, if you do want to increase the screen brightness, just increase the opacity, just like that. And even that looks nice. So that's how to create a screen mockup using the screen blend mode in Photoshop. A quick little recap. First, figure out what is going to be the aspect ratio or the resolution of the screen that you're placing your image on or your placeholder on. So in this case, she was using an iPad and we can quickly search what is the resolution of it or we can take a guess. And once you have determined it, create a rectangle with that aspect ratio. With gray color, neutral gray is the best. It doesn't matter what color that is, but neutral gray is exactly in the neutral. So it helps you see everything like the reflection or the brightness properly. The next step is to use distort and warp to place it properly like we have done right over here, as you can see. Now, after you have placed it, also take it away from the areas which are covering the display using a mask right here. And to create the real effect, you can either change the blend mode of this layer from normal to screen, or you can choose to keep it normal and create a copy of the background, apply it as a clipping mask, and then change the blend mode of that layer to screen. That gives you the flexibility to control the brightness of the reflection by adding a curves right here. And if there's a shallow depth of field, do not forget to simulate it in the placeholder. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this video helped you. I hope you learned something new. And if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Pix Imperfect on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all your support. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. What can I do?